This is Andy Tube. This video, I'm going to remove the switch, motor, light, and all the wiring from this Singer Model 353. Um, this would be the same for 354 and the Genie and Starlet. If you've seen um, one of my cleaning videos, you know that I like to take out uh, a lot of parts and the electrical and stuff and and pre-treat uh, for grease and dirt and then take it in the shower and and uh, give the machine a shower and cleaning it with a crud cutter solution and I'm sure I'll end up doing this on Benny here sooner or later but I uh, figured we've done the motor and hand wheel and stuff I'll just go ahead and do the the wiring. I'm going to start right up here with the with the uh, um, on and off switch, and that turns on power to the motor and to the light at the same time. So of course your your, your machine has to be unplugged before you do this. Huh? I, I shouldn't have to tell you that, but just so that YouTube will be happy with my uh, safety lessons. So since it's on the front here, it's just two screws, two screws right here. And, uh, you know, you can take pictures of this procedures on your machine if you're doing this. And remember to keep, keep your screws kind of separate and labeled because uh, some of them are interchangeable, but many are not. And uh, when you go to reassemble this at some point, you're going to have to get the right screws in the right place. So it'll save you time if you stick them in little Ziplocs or, um, uh, you know, some people use an egg carton. And, and especially the paper ones, which I see you can write, write on kind of like the lid and put stuff in the little spaces for the eggs. But that's that's it. I kind of like this uh, wiring on this genie. Kind of surprised me. I guess because the machine's so compact, all the wiring is kind of on the outside. I don't have to fish it through through the upright here and in through the arm and so forth. So I really I really like that a lot. Uh, I'm going to go past the motor here and over to the light now. Now this white part that you see up here, that is a heat shield like. And if you want to remove that, you would take out these two screws that go through the heat shield. But that's all it is. And if you just want to remove the light and wiring, it's just on a kind of like a hinge screw here that's got a, um, a spring around it. And you just take that out. And... Uh, don't lose that spring when you take it out. I don't think it's going to come flying off. We'll see. No, it's it's once you start loosening it, there's not any tension. There's not any tension on it. It's just uh, the hinge screw, which I've described many times, and it's got a spring. Let's see if the spring does. Yeah, the spring will come off. So keep keep track of that okay and you saw as I pulled that out I guess you saw the the light fixture which Singer calls the lamp by the way it just kinda fell right down off of there boom so that's how easy it is to remove the switch in the lamp now the wiring for those two it kinda goes back behind the motor like between the motor and the casting to keep it out of the way so we got to take the motor off with this uh, bracket uh, mounting bracket screw and uh, I already by the way this is a 15 16 socket and I had already loosened that uh, when I was doing the doing the motor belt 
um, so we'll pull this out it has a washer with the screw right so that's the four screws that you need to remove to get the electrics off the machine now this should lift right up off of there like so easy peasy huh show you where the the back of that uh what's behind the motor you know it's just the casting and the the stitch length control or the feed regulator is the back of it there mm -hmm. so we get this kind of out of the way and that is it that's it for removing all of that um, I guess since we got it this far I might as well take a look inside the motor housing um, kind of see I'm, I'm curious to see how these wires are labeled or are spliced here so it looks like maybe a couple screws in the front and one set in back here so I'm going to take that cover what I'll call the cover mounting screw I guess see if I can get in there and Ooh, that's in there. That is in there pretty good. Mm, there we go. Guess they didn't want that rattling around. You know, I love my Chapman hollow point uh, screwdriver set. I really love it, but there's just some cases where it won't, you know, I can't use it because there's no room. So I'm kind of uh, looking around for a set of screwdrivers with individual, you know, instead of instead of the tips that you can take in and out, which is very economical, you know, this thing falls apart. I'm looking kind of for a set of screwdrivers like like this with just um, not interchangeable, because there's just some some times, but I want the hollow point not the taper a uh, hollow ground not the taper point anyway that's on my wish list hey have you seen you can I take donations now my my a friend hooked me up with a pay paypal dot me slash andy tube and some people have donated some money to help me get machines and parts and supplies and stuff and I really appreciate that that's very kind of you thanks so here's this little skinny uh, screw that I believe holds the the cover on the machine I'll put that aside here and let's let's see I think the cover is just going to slide right off it's kind of a molded here cover up the splice area and so it looks a little different than that 237 I did but it's probably a very similar motor inside let's see if I can just gently keep sliding it off here right it doesn't feel like it's catching on anything it's just a snug a snug fit Eee, look at that so there is there is a fan on here hmm. I guess maybe because of all the molded plastic in there they wanted to maybe help keep it running quiet but cool so they put like a big cover and housing over it but there's a fan a blower to blow probably pulls air in from the side and blows it out this end I'm thinking because it seemed like it seemed like when I took the covers off that there were some shark shark gill openings in the plastic back here okay there's a cool looking motor and now there's uh, ways you can pull the wiring off there's some here's a number two a number one two and three so in the service manual there's well look at that 
and the whole blade comes out like so I'm not I'm not too interested in disconnecting wires and things like that but what I would be interested look how clean it is what I would be interested in is right here are the motor brushes so if here's one so there's got to be one down low on the other side yeah I'm trying to see how those those are attached I don't see any little uh, screws or anything this little uh, thing I have seen people uh, bend that little piece of brass up and it's right inside is the spring that's pushing the carbon brush onto the commutator wow the commutator even looks clean in there I don't know you can, probably can't see if I can get a light over you probably can't see that in there but I'm I you know from looking at this machine it just didn't seem like it had a lot of use but I don't know, even that copper commutator in there is pretty, pretty clean. Eee. What I was hoping was that the, the little brass tubes that hold the um, brushes would be like slotted so I could see how much of the brush was left. I mean, I can I can look down here at the bottom, and what's visible to me is only about a, a little over a sixteenth, maybe three thirty seconds of an inch. So, but let's take the front end off here. Maybe maybe we can see more if we take the front end off here, right? But that was pretty. Pretty interesting setup here. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. You know, I'm thinking of that PA motor that sits in like the 401A, 403, and the Rocketeers, kind of sitting in there like that. It has a big long shaft, but up up in there is a fan. The same thing to blow air on it. Okay, let's take these two little screws out. So this this is the mounting bracket where the you know uh, this goes to the casting or frame of the machine, and then this part uh, screws into probably some kind of motor housing here. Let's see what we let's see what happens here when we open this up. And here's, of course, is your your plug for your three-way cord. Oh, I should have showed you. I'll show you this one. They're not very long. They look like half inch or less long. What do they call that type of screw? Cadmium. Okay, let me grab those guys and put those two screws over here with my with my other. Mm -hmm. Yep, bingo. <laughs> there. I was just going to say, how does this come off now? <laughs> and that answers that question. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny is there's a little tiny bit of rust on this where those screws were. I thought one of the screws show, was showing some rust. There's a little bit of rust on that, which surprises me. It's kind of inside the machine and everything. Maybe a humid or, or uh, climate this machine was in or... Um, well, see, the original owner had retired and lived up in Lake Havasu, Arizona, I think it was, for many years. Uh, also by a saltwater 
uh, you know, by the ocean, you'll get that kind of a rust. I don't see how how this will come farther, but this is the screw. You see the kind of like the brass alloy where the screws actually screw into metal through a, through a metal bracket. So I like that and the bracket's kind of chunky. You know, it's not flimsy at all. It's good good and sturdy. And this is kind of like that Bakelite plastic but I don't I don't know I don't I don't see it coming apart here anymore it's kind of delicate in here with the I see a wire coming from the coil right there and it's soldered to the housing that the brush sits in and uh, I was trying to think how that whole thing, I, maybe it snaps together there. I wonder if this is the type of pulley that just pulls and pushes on. Because I don't see a, uh, oh man, I don't want to ruin it. I did this one time many years ago when I was first kind of learning these machines. I wanted to get the pulley off and the guy said, yeah, just, just pry it off. They just pull on and off. And, and I broke it. And then later when I looked at it, I missed a little tiny mounting screw, a little set screw. <laughs> it was screwed to the motor shaft. I don't see anything like that here. But I can see... I can see quite a bit of the motor brush. So I'm not worried that it needs new brushes or anything like that. I just wanted to see how this whole bracket came in there. And the way this black bake light comes up and sits right here. See there's like a rivet here. And I'm I'm wondering if it if it doesn't you take this off and you could pry the front of this off, but that still wouldn't wouldn't give you so maybe there's a screw under there if you pry this front part off. So if I ever had to find uh replace the motor brushes, I guess I'd keep playing more. But I'm satisfied just getting it down like this. And seeing, I'll probably go in with a little, uh, you know, with a little alcohol and just clean off some of that older carbon deposits on the commutator. But it's really, it's really not bad at all. Okay, so then, you know, I, I don't think I need to show you putting it all back together. Just a reminder that when, when I took this off, the, the wiring was kind of tucked out the back side of the motor. So the wiring was pretty, pretty hidden, you know, back there. And on the back side of the motor cover, you see the slot there to allow those wires to come out, right? So it would just be gently, gently sliding that back on. You see that there's some like like rubber guides here on the side. That's why it's so snug, I think, so that the cover won't rattle. Oops, got that upside down. So when you're putting it back on, you want to be sure that uh, uh, you don't get caught any of the wiring here. And that on the back side, you go ahead and guide the wiring out the slot like that. That's what that's for. Then the, the motor will be mounted to the machine and the wiring for the light 
kind of lays in this track right there. So you want to be sure that when you're when you're mounting the machine, uh, I mean the, the motor back to the machine, you know this just fits like a jigsaw piece right there. Goes right in there. You screw it on. Then the one wire comes out the bottom and goes around to the front of the machine for the switch. And the lamp lead wire fits right in this little groove and, and would come out the back like so and up. So it wouldn't be hard to do. I think I'll put some of my must for rust product on there and clean that up though. So that's removing the, the all the wiring and the switch and the motor and the light lamp from Benny, a Singer Model 353 uh, Genie or Starlet. Getting down there, huh? It's getting, getting uh, more and more parts off of here. So, of course, if, if everything was working for you on this, you wouldn't need to you know take it off if you didn't want to I, I mean I take it off because I want to super degrease and everything the machine but just just in case you have to uh, change the motor brushes or get into it more it's good for you to know maybe you just got a bad switch and you need to replace it or so forth thanks for tuning in and watching my channel again uh, you know if it's worth your time, come back and see me again. You're welcome to comment. And, uh, you know, you can subscribe if you like. That's up to you. Take care.